let me welcome you to the first lecture of this course in this particular course we will discuss about molecular symmetry now when we talk about molecular symmetry i am sure i am confident that you all are familiar with uh, molecular symmetry that is you know uh, you are familiar with the uh, symmetry elements and also you are able to find out symmetry operation or identify symmetry operations in simple molecules like water or ammonia. Now one particular question that we also ask at this point is that how is finding out symmetry operations uh, or symmetry elements uh, in a particular molecule is going to be beneficial for us in uh, learning chemistry. So I can give you two very quick examples to illustrate why uh, it is finding out why molecular symmetry is important uh, is an important topic in chemistry. The first uh, uh, particular issue is that if uh, we all know how to draw molecular vital diagram for simple diatomic molecules like uh, carbon monoxide or nitric oxide, or for example, for what uh, for oxygen or uh, dinitrogen. Now, have you ever tried to draw a molecular orbital diagram for simple uh, triatomic molecule like say uh, water or carbon dioxide or for say other polyatomic uh, molecules? Now, if you do so, what we will find is that without the application of the principles of molecular symmetry, oh, it is not possible to draw the molecular orbital diagrams for such polyatomic molecules. Another simple example that we can give for illustrating the importance of molecular symmetry is that we all know that when we combine one S orbital with three P orbitals we get sp3 hybridized orbitals and the lobes of a, a sp3 hybridized orbitals essentially point towards the corners of a tetrahedron. Now is it possible to mathematically uh, prove this particular observation or this particular knowledge and if you want to do so one needs to use again the uh, principles of uh, molecular symmetry to verify this mathematically. Now in order to use the molecular symmetry for uh, solving or understanding different issues of chemistry, we need to use a uh, simple mathematical uh, theory that is known as group theory. So once we apply the principles of group theory to uh, molecular symmetry, then we will be able to use uh, uh, this uh, particular you know, combination of knowledge to uh, solve different problems of uh, chemistry and this is what we want to do in this particular uh, course or uh, that we, want, we would like to use the principles of molecular symmetry and group theory in solving different issues of chemistry or to enhance our understanding of different problems in chemistry. So let us begin with this and to begin with We would first like to differentiate between the element of symmetry and symmetry operations. So, symmetry elements and symmetry operations. So, are they same thing, the symmetry elements and the symmetry operations, this is a question. So it is they are not and they are distinctly different, uh, they, they denote distinctly different uh, things. But the symmetry elements are geometrical objects. You should very clearly remember that these are geometrical objects. Now, 
not all kinds of geometrical objects. A plane can be a symmetry element. So then we call it a plane of symmetry. A point can also be a symmetry element, which we call as the center of symmetry, as well as an axis can also be a symmetry element, which we call axis of symmetry. There are two types of axis of symmetry. We will talk about that later. Now, before we uh, go for that, let us also discuss what are symmetry operations and how they are different from symmetry elements. Now, symmetry operations are not geometrical objects, but they are movement of a model. So, these are movement of a let's not write body, let's call it a molecule because for us, for us chemists, it's always a movement of a molecule. And these are not ordinary movements of a molecule. This movement of, after the, we carry out the movement of the molecule, all points in the molecule or all atoms in the molecule should coincide with an equivalent point or atom of the molecule in the initial uh, state that was before we carried out the uh, movement. So essentially, wh what it means in layman terms is that if you close your eyes and during that particular period, if we move the molecule, after you reopen your eyes, you should not be able to distinguish whether we have carried out the movement or not. This means that, uh, that all, you know, the initial configuration of the molecule or the initial position and orientation of all atoms of the molecule are indistinguishable from the final position and uh, orientation of the molecule that is let us put this in words that after we carry out the movement the initial position and orientation of all atoms in the molecule matches with the final position and orient orientation of the model. Items. So this is what are symmetry operations. Now when we carry out a symmetry operation or when we carry out the movement of a molecule, we carry out the movement with respect to certain geometrical objects. So that is when we uh, carry out a reflection. So we carry out reflection. Uh, reflection is an operation, symmetry operation, and we carry out a reflection operation with respect to a plane. So when we have a plane of symmetry, say this is a this is a plane. If this is a plane, then with respect to this particular plane. Uh, which is a geometrical object or which is a symmetry element, then with respect to this particular plane, we can carry out something known as reflection operation. The symmetry operation that we generate by the, uh, by the plane of symmetry is known as a reflection operation and a particular uh, point which is here, before we carry out the operation, it will, once it, we, we do the reflection operation, it will go with respect to, uh, it will, with respect to this particular plane, if we do the reflection operation, it will go it will be reflected. The final position of the uh, point is going to be this after we carry out the reflection operation. And uh, when there is another another uh, atom, say another point is available here because the reflection of this particular point should be the, will be this one, and the reflection of this point will be this one because now uh, when we do the reflection operation, the we cannot distinguish whether we have carried out the reflection or not. 
So that is why this is going to be a reflection symmetry operation. We can we will illustrate this using molecules and it will be more clear. So now we understand the difference between symmetry element and symmetry operation. Symmetry elements are geometrical objects, while symmetry operations are movement of a body with respect to a particular geometrical object. And we have seen that with respect to a plane, we carry out reflection. So reflect plane is the element of symmetry. Reflection is the symmetry operation. Similarly, with respect to a point, we carry out inversion operation. And uh, here again, point is the element and inversion is the operation. With respect to an axis, we can carry out a rotation operation. Uh, so, rotation is the symmetry operation and axis is the symmetry element. So, apart from these uh, symmetry elements, we also have another uh, symmetry element that is known as the identity element. We need it to apply principles of group theory in uh, symmetry, molecular symmetry. And this particular, uh, we will understand what the meaning of identity operation, identity element. So with respect to an identity element, we carry out the symmetry operation or the asymmetry operation that we generate by uh, using the symmetry element identity is the identity symmetry operation. And what do we do or what kind of movement we do when we carry out identity operation? That is, we do not do anything. So when you do not do any movement, actually, one can, well, we denote it as identity operation and the symmetry element, the respective symmetry element is the identity and the symmetry operation is identity operation. So this will be clear in a moment. In a moment. So let us now discuss about the symmetry elements and the kind of operations they generate in more detail. And let us begin this with uh, the symmetry element, uh, that is the plane of symmetry. So this plane of symmetry uh, let us illustrate uh, what, uh, how a plane of symmetry uh, generates a reflection operation by using a simple molecule, that is the water molecule. And in order to understand how the reflection operation work or how we can do reflection with respect to a plane, let us level the two hydrogen atoms on this water molecule. Now, if we imagine a, a plane, which is, say, if, so if we imagine that the, uh, all atoms of this water molecule lie on the plane of this board, that is the hydrogen, oxygen, and this particular hydrogen, they all lie on, on the plane of the board. And let us now imagine a, a plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the board and which passes through the oxygen atom. So we are talking about a plane which passes through the oxygen atom essentially and which is perpendicular to the plane of the board. So it bisects the water molecule in this way. So now if we do a reflection operation with respect to this particular plane of symmetry, so we denote the reflection operation or the conventional symbol to denote the reflection operation is uh, sigma. So let us do, uh, to, we denote the reflection operation by using this particular symbol and when we do the reflection operation with respect to this particular uh, plane of symmetry then what is going to be the configuration that we are going to get this hydrogen atom will reach the position of this hydrogen atom over here and vice versa so h1 will be reflected towards this side so it will come occupy the position of H2 uh, and then H2 will occupy the initial position of H1. So this is going to be the uh, final position and orientation of this uh, water molecule after we carry out the reflection operation. Now if you see that without the levels 1 and 2 on this hydrogen atom, the position and orientation of the atoms in the final uh, configuration after we do the reflection operation 
is indistinguishable from the position and orientation that we have in case of the initial configuration. So what we have done is a symmetry operation or what we have done here is a reflection symmetry operation. So let us now do go one more step ahead and do the reflection operation once again with, the, with respect to the same plane of symmetry. So we will once again do a reflection with respect to the same plane of symmetry that is uh, here which bisects the water molecule in this way. So then what happens is if we draw the configuration again, so this is what we get. So now if you compare the uh, configuration that we obtain here with the initial configuration here, you, what we will see not only the configurations are indistinguishable with the initial configuration here, but also the configurations that we the configuration that we obtain here by doing sigma two times essentially is identical to the initial configuration that we have for this water molecule here. So what it means as if we have not done anything to the water molecule, and this is and this you know we can we can get this here this we know as the identity operation so this is what is identity operation as we have already illustrated or we have already discussed that doing nothing no movement is known as identity operation and since these two configurations are completely identical to each other so that is why we say that when we reach this particular configuration we have done an identity operation here so again now let us say the plane of symmetry, a particular plane of symmetry, generate two symmetry operations. One is when we do sigma, we reach this particular configuration. And when we do sigma two times, what happens is that we reach a configuration which is identical to the initial configuration. So when we do sigma two times, we get we actually do a identity operation. So let us now do sigma one more time. The same the sigma with respect to the same plane of symmetry. So then what happens is this is the configuration we get. Again, this configuration matches with this configuration that we get after doing sigma one time. So when we do sigma three times, so essentially it is equivalent to doing sigma one time only. So now if you do once again, if you continue this exercise, what you will find. When we do sigma four times, we again reach the uh, identical configuration of the initial initial identical con con configuration actually. Uh, so that that means when we do sigma four times, we get uh, e, and if you continue this, you will get this. So we can write a generic form that when sigma to the power n is equal to sigma when n is or and sigma to the power n is equal to identity when n is even. So the symmetry element, plane of symmetry, generate only one distinct symmetry operation that is sigma alone because for all other cases for sigma 2, sigma 4 we will get with this equivalent to identity operation and only one distinct symmetry operation is generated by a plane of symmetry, that is the reflection operation. Now let us try to identify the plane of symmetry in a slightly more complicated molecule that is in the methane molecule. So let us draw the methane molecule. As we know, the methane molecule is a tetrahedral as a tetrahedral shape. So this is the methane molecule, and uh, let us try to find out the planes of symmetry present in uh, this uh, methane molecule. So how many planes of symmetry are present in this uh, molecule? So if we draw a vision molecule in this way, it may be that slightly difficult to identify all the plane of symmetry in this molecule. So let us try to draw the tetrahedral or this tetrahedral molecule in a few more different ways. So one more way that we can draw a tetrahedral is this. That is the the 
polyhedral shape in this way we can draw as well as we can also draw the tetrahedron in this way So this is another way that we can draw it in a hadron. And I feel this, uh, if we draw it in a hadron in this uh, fashion, then it is easier to identify all the plane of symmetry in the molecule. So before we go for identifying the plane of symmetry, let us also level the hydrogen atoms as 1, 2, 3, 4, because this will again uh, make our life easy because we will be able to denote different uh, plane of symmetry by the levels of the hydrogen atoms. So now uh, it should be easy to find out the at least two plane of symmetry in this uh, tetrahedral molecule because we have drawn the uh, molecule in this way where these two hydrogen atoms here uh, lie on the plane of the board while these two this hydrogen atom H3 lies on above the plane of, plane of the board while H3 H2 goes below the plane of the board and are perpendicular are this plane uh, containing H3, C, H2 or plane passing through these three atoms H3, C, H2 is perpendicular to the plane of the board or the plane containing H1, C, H4. So now we see uh, two plane of symmetry that is sigma, let us do this, sigma H1 C H4. So if we take the plane uh, which passes through the uh, three atoms H1, C, H4, that is the plane of this particular board. So if we do sigma with respect to this, then the configuration that we are going to get because these atoms H1, H4 and the carbon atom lie on the plane itself, so they will not move, but these two atoms which uh, are perpendicular, which lie on a plane perpendicular to the uh, plane, uh, this this particular plane of symmetry. So they are going to get swept. So H2 will come over here, and H3 will be will this the position of H2. So this is the the final configuration we can draw in this plane. So this is H2, and this is H3. So what we see is that the con final configuration after we do uh, this uh, reflection operation is indistinguishable from the initial configuration except for the levels on these two hydrogen atoms. So what we have done is symmetry operation and we have identified at least one plane of symmetry on the, in this particular tetrahedral molecule. So now we can take again the plane containing H2C H3 and do reflection with respect to that particular plane of symmetry. This particular plane is perpendicular to the plane of the board. So these two hydrogen atoms are going to get swept now and these two hydrogen atoms because they contain uh, the plane of the symmetry that is why they will not be moved and the final configuration that we are going to get after doing reflection operation with respect to this particular plane of symmetry that is sigma H2, C, H3, so will give us H3, H2 are not going to move while H4 and H1 will be swept here in this way. So again we have done a symmetry operation and the plane of symmetry which, has, which, which respect to which we have done this is the plane con containing these three atoms here in this tetrahedron. So now if we look very carefully what is uh, what we will realize is that if we take any two set of hydrogen atoms in the tetrahedral molecule and uh, you know consider a plane passing through the uh, any two hydrogen atoms of the tetrahedral molecule here and the carbon atom then what is going, that is going to be a that is going to constitute a plane of symmetry. So if we take sigma H1 C H2 now these two hydrogens will get swept and uh, again we will have a plane of symmetry here and similarly sigma H1 C H3 is also a plane of symmetry and then we have sigma H2 
C, H4, and finally sigma H3, C, H4. This is another plane of symmetry. So, so now we have considered all uh, different sets of you know hydrogen atoms or planes constituted by different uh, set of hydrogen atoms and the carbon atom. So, what we have seen is that there are total six distinct plane of symmetry in the tetrahedral in molecules like a methane molecule here, and all of these. Planes of symmetry are different from each other or distinct from each other, and they are going to generate six different uh, reflection operations essentially. So, we have now identified all plane of symmetry in the tetrahedral molecule. We should, what we should do uh, is we should take more complicated molecules now, like say, uh, for example, tetra octahedral molecule, and try to, uh, try to identify different plane of symmetry in such molecules. So we can also, uh, we should try to understand uh, the result of reflection operation with respect to uh, say coordinate geometry and if we take the three dimensional coordinate, Cartesian coordinates as the basis that is x, y and z axis. Say. Now let us take a point over here which uh, coordinate x, y and z say. Now let us consider a plane of symmetry that is that is constituted by the fz plane of symmetry say. this and uh, sorry yz let's let's take no, instead of N, uh, xz let's take uh, yz so sigma yz plane if we take if we take a constitute a plane of symmetry with sigma uh, yz plane uh, then what is going to happen is the point that is because the sigma yz plane is perpendicular to the plane of the board here if x and y axis lie on the plane of the board and z axis is perpendicular to the plane of the board then sigma yz is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the board and after we do reflection with, the, with respect to this particular plane the this this point is going to reach somewhere over here so what are going to be the final coordinates of this particular point here because x after we do reflection with respect to sigma yz will go to uh, actually this is because this is sorry this is minus x so let's take the coordinate initial coordinates on this side of the uh, where the coordinates are positive because x is positive here y is positive even here also as well as here and y also, the z is also positive here. So this is minus z and this is minus y. So when we do sigma yz, so this point, let us reflect this particular point, will reach over here and the final coordinate here, x, is going to become minus x because this is minus x axis. Then y, we see a coordinate is not going to change and it is going to remain as y as well as the z coordinate also does not change and it goes to uh, plus z itself, it remains plus z itself. So similarly if we do now reflection with respect to sigma xz, say let us do sigma xz again another plane of symmetry uh, plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the board but now the orientation of the plane is in this particular way because we are considering x and z, uh, plane considered by x and z axis here. So this point is going to reach somewhere over here. Now this x coordinate remains x. What we see, y coordinate but instead goes to minus y, while z coordinate goes to plus z itself. So what we can do, or what we should try to find out, what are the final coordinates going to uh, for this particular point if we do ref reflection with respect to the plane x y z. So if we do reflection with respect to the plane x, y and we try to uh, find out what are going to be the coordinates of this particular point.
Let us now go ahead and discuss about another element of symmetry that is the center of symmetry. Now the object, symmetrical object with respect to, uh, to which uh, or which we uh, say as center of symmetry uh, is a point essentially and with respect to the point the operation that we do is inversion operation that we have already discussed and to illustrate this let us take very simple examples. Let's take the cis platine, oh, sorry, trans platine molecule. So this is a trans platine uh, molecule. Now, if we imagine a point at, uh, on this platinum atom here, and what we do, if we draw a line from this nitrogen atom, uh, the ammonia ligand over here, uh, and then you know continue towards the point over here that we have imagined on the platinum atom and if we continue even after the point for a distance uh, if you continue this line for a distance equal distance actually from this nitrogen atom to the platinum atom if we go for equal distance on this side as well from this point here so we should encounter another equivalent atom so because what we see uh, there is another nitrogen atom as we continue the line uh, for equal distance from this point uh, there is another nitrogen atom of ammonia ligand this is true then again it is true also for this chlorine atom so we uh, draw a line from this chlorine atom to the platinum atom or to this point here and then we continue the line for an equal distance that is the distance between this chlorine atom and this point and we should go for equal distance here but we see there is another uh, similar atom that is chlorine atom is there and since it is true for both of the on, on for both ammonia and then uh, chlorine or for all atoms in this particular molecule except for the atom here and the uh, which lies on the center of symmetry here so if it is true then we call this particular point as the center of symmetry and the e operation that we have done uh, is inversion operation so if we again uh, take another molecule. See, let us take instead of cis platine, let us take also oh, instead of trans platine, let us now take cis platine. And let us try to find out whether uh, there is a center of symmetry in this molecule or not. Now, if we draw a line from this chlorine atom to this uh, platinum atom over here and then continue the line for equal distance, we do not encounter a chlorine atom here. Instead, there is a ammonia. Uh, ligand is here and similarly on this side also if we do we uh, encounter instead of a chlorine we encounter an ammonia and that is why the point that we have considered here on the platinum atom is not a center of symmetry and this particular molecule does not have a center of symmetry and only in case of uh, this uh, trans platine we have center of symmetry while in case of cis platine we do not have uh, center of symmetry and you should see or you should see in different molecules where there are center of symmetry. Now in terms of coordinate geometry again if we see if we draw the coordinates x, y, z coordinates here again and if you consider a point x, y, z and now the origin of this coordinate system if we consider it to be the center of symmetry and let us draw a line from uh, the point to the center of symmetry here and let us continue uh, going for an equal distance that is the distance between this point and the center of symmetry we should continue for that particular distance on the opposite side and the point that we are going to get its coordinate is going to be what so as we because minus x this is minus y and minus z so we see that all the coordinates become negative here unlike in case of uh, reflection operation where only uh, the axis which was which does not contain the uh, plane of symmetry uh, that, that only became negative or coordinate, uh, coordinate on that particular axis only became negative or well, in case of inversion operation we see all uh, coordinates on x y z became essentially negative when you did inversion symmetry operation
Now again, let us uh, see. Let us take the same uh, cis platin or tra transplatin itself, and then see how many symmetry operations are generated by the uh, center of uh, symmetry. So let us the center of symmetry, uh, as we have said already, that uh, the symmetry operation it generates is known as inversion operation. And the symbol or the conventional symbol that we use to denote an inversion operation is I. So let us do an inversion operation with respect to this particular point lying on the uh, platinum atom. So uh, let us also maybe denote as N1 and Cl1, N2 and Cl2. So to distinguish between the ammonia ligands and the uh, chlorine and uh, ligands, chloro ligands here. So after we do inversion operation, this Cl will move to the position of this Cl here, and this ammonia uh, will move to the position of this particular ammonia here, and vice versa here. So, so the final configuration after we do inversion operation is Cl1, Cl2, N2H3 here, and so or we can say NH3. 2 instead of N2H3 because that will if you may feel that it is a different uh, ligand so NH3 1 so what we see here after we do inversion operation the ligands on opposite sides uh, essentially on transpositions get got swept and then let us do an inversion operation with respect to the same center of symmetry once again. And then what we realize is like the plane of symmetry here as well, we reach identical configuration. After we do the inversion operation with respect to the same center of symmetry two times. So here as well, when we do inversion one times, we do inversion. Uh, we get inversion operation, but when we do inversion operation two times, it is equivalent to the identity operation. And when we do inversion three times, it is obvious that it is like inversion operation only, and so on and so forth. So we can again write IN is equal to I for N or, and IN is equal to E for N even. So now we see that again for the inversion as or well for the center of symmetry generate only again one symmetry operation or one distinct symmetry operation that is the inversion operation because the as we if we carry out the operation more than one time we get when we do it for two times we get identity operation and when we do it for three times again we see that we get the same inversion operation itself or as if we have done the inversion only once. So uh, because I3 is just again I only and that is why in the center of symmetry generates only one symmetry operation. Let us now discuss about Another element of symmetry, it is the axis of symmetry. Now, when we talk about the axis of symmetry, there are two types of axis of symmetry. The first one that we are going to discuss here today is known as the proper axis of symmetry, and there is another one that we call as the improper axis of symmetry. That we will discuss in the next lecture. Now, let us talk about the proper axis of symmetry. And uh, to illustrate again the proper axis of symmetry or how one carries out symmetry operation with respect to a proper axis of symmetry, let us again take the water molecule as the example. Now, let us imagine an axis or a line passing through the oxygen atom in this particular way. Now, if we do a rotation of the water molecule with respect to this particular 
x is passing through the oxygen atom. And if we do a rotation of 2 pi by 2 degree, that is 180 degree. So let us see what happens when we do rotation of 2 pi by 2 degree with respect to this uh, particular axis. So then the configuration, because we have rotated 180 degree, the H1 again uh, will get swapped with H2 and vice versa. So H2 and H1. So this is what happens. Oxygen atom does not move because it, it is it contains the axis of symmetry and it is not going to move when we do the rotation operation with respect to this axis of symmetry. So the configuration that we obtain here is indistinguishable from the initial configuration and we have carried out a symmetry operation and the operation that we have carried out is a rotation operation and we donate or uh, denote uh, a rotation operation as CN operation and in this case what is uh, what is N here? So when we do rotation of 2 pi by n degree with respect to an axis, if we obtain indistinguishable configuration or if we do a symmetry operation then, then we say that we have performed a, a CN operation. So since in this case what we have done is we have done a 2 pi by 2 degree rotation and we obtain indistinguishable configuration. So we have done a C2 operation here and the, uh, this is what we have obtained. So now let us uh, do the C2 operation once again here for the water molecule and what we see is this. So we get uh, again the uh, identical configuration with the initial configuration and what we have seen is that we, when we did C2 once uh, we got a distinct symmetry operation but when we did C2 two times we have obtained identity operation. Now what we may feel that like the axis plane of symmetry or uh, the center of symmetry, the axis of symmetry also produce only one symmetry, uh, distinct symmetry operation that is uh, Cn alone, in this case C2, but that is not true. Let us illustrate this by taking a molecule uh, which has an axis of symmetry of higher order. So what we mean by saying order, this is known as the order of the axis. So because in this case, uh, uh, the, uh, the, in this case, in this particular case, the order of the axis is equal to 2 and for, if we take for higher order axis of symmetry, uh, the situation is uh, slightly different and in order to illustrate that, let us take the ammonia molecule which is again a very simple molecule and see the kind of axis of symmetry present in the ammonia molecule which is pyramidal in nature, we know this is the ammonia molecule and there is, we can assume or imagine an axis of symmetry which passes through the nitrogen atom here uh, and then if we do 2 pi by 3 degree rotation with respect to this uh, ammonia molecule, what is going to happen is that H1, H2, H3, if we take, then we get because if we do rotation in this particular way, this hydrogen will come over here and this hydrogen will go here while well, this hydrogen will reach over here. If we look from the top here, if you place our eye on top of the nitrogen atom of here, what we will see is essentially this sort of a picture for the ammonia molecule will appear as triangular and the movement because we are doing rotation with respect to an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the board, that is why the hydrogen atoms will move in uh, this particular fashion when we do the rotation in uh, clockwise direction if we do anti-clockwise it will again come in this way so this essentially illustrates us how the uh, you know, uh, hydrogen atoms are going to move when we do the uh, c3 operation here so this is h1 will reach here h2 will be here and h3 is going to be here 
So now let us do this C3 operation here once again. And what we will see now the configuration is no longer identical to the initial configuration because H1 is here, H2 is here and H3 is here. This is not identical to the initial configuration yet. So we have not reached, we have not done identity operation. So we cannot say that we can you know, do identity operation here. So let us do C3 one more time. <coughs> So the configuration that we get upon doing C3 for one more time, we see is H1, H2, and H3. Now this configuration that we obtain after doing C3 here is identical to the initial configuration. So this is identity. Uh, so what we have done here is that when we did C3 here once, one time we can denote this symmetry operation as C3 one time and this configuration we obtain after doing the C3 one operation two times actually. So successive C3 operation. So that is why we call this symmetry operation as C3 two times because it is equivalent to doing two 2 pi by 3 degree rotations. It is not 120 degree but we have rotated 240 degree and then only you know, if we start from here, we have done 240 degree, which is 2 into 2 pi by 3. So that is why we call it a C3 uh, 2 symmetry operation, as if we have done 2 C3 1 operation, and this operation uh, similarly is a C3 3 operation. So what we see here is that, that C3 1 is one operation that is generated by the this axis of symmetry, which is we call as C3 axis of symmetry. Now, C3 2 is another distinct of symmetry operation that is generated by a C3 axis of symmetry, and C3 3 is equal to identity. So, for the axis of symmetry, it is not necessary that you know it is going to produce only one symmetry operation for each, each axis of symmetry. Um, it is true for the C2 axis of symmetry that it generates only one symmetry operation because C2 2 is was equal to identity. But we have seen for C3 axis of symmetry, uh, it generates two distinct symmetry operations, C3 1 and C3 2, while C3 3 is equal to identity. So we can take even more comple um, complex molecules containing uh, axis of symmetry of even higher order and then see uh, the kind of symmetry operations generated by such axis of symmetry. So let us take the benzene molecule, which is again highly symmetric molecule. And you can imagine, and if we place the benzene molecule, all carbon atom and hydrogen atom of the benzene molecule on the plane of the board, then you can imagine if an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the board and passes through the center of the benzene uh, molecule here. And that is, that axis is a C6 axis of symmetry. And let us see, uh, what kind of symmetry operations are going to be generated by the C6 axis of symmetry? And let us do C6 1, C6 2, uh, C6 3, uh, C6 4, uh, C6 5, and C6 6. And let's see if C6 uh, 6 is equal to identity or not, or otherwise we will continue here further. So instead of drawing the molecule and then performing the symmetry operation and then finding out how many symmetry operations are generated by this particular axis of symmetry, we can do this mathematically as well, which is going to save us a lot of time. So C61 is going to be a distinct symmetry operation that we can uh, easily find out. Now when we do C62 times, it is essentially doing 2, two times 2 pi by uh, 6 degree rotation. And when we do C63 times, it is doing 2 pi by 3 times this. So this is 4 times 2 pi by 6. And this is 5 times 2 pi by 6, and this is 6 times 2 pi by 6. So this is 1 into 2 pi by 6, which is actually C6, 1 rotation. Now we can do some simplification here because this gets cancelled, and we get 3 over here, and this is going to be 2 pi by 3 degree rotation only. And we know when we do 2 pi by 3 rotation, it is just like a C3 one rotation and then this is going to be equal to 2. So this is 2 pi by 
two, which is a C two rotation. We can instead of writing C two one, we can simply write C two here because C two two is going to be anyway identity. So for C two, we don't need to write a one over here. And then for this, we can write to three, so that is. Two into two pi by three, so that is c three two essentially, and this is this will not get simplified any further. So c six it will remain as c six five, and this v c is equal to two pi, that is three hundred and sixty degree rotation, which is equivalent to doing identity operation. So now what we see that the c six axis of symmetry. Produces only two distinct symmetry operations. That is C61 and C65. So we can do this exercise for even higher or uh, axis of even higher order, and then see what kind of symmetry axis or uh, symmetry operations are generated by such axis of symmetry. But what else is interesting here is that when we do simplification for uh, different symmetry operations generated by the C6 axis of symmetry, what we saw is that Uh, we got symmetry operations which are generated by a C3 axis of symmetry as well because we have already seen that C3 axis of symmetry generates uh, two symmetry operations that is C31 and C2. Similarly, uh, we also saw that it uh, also generates symmetry operations generated by a C2 axis of symmetry. So what does it tell us that whenever there is a C6 axis of symmetry present in a molecule? We will always have a C3 axis of symmetry as well as C2 axis of symmetry along with the C6 axis of symmetry, and all of these three axis of symmetry are going to be collinear. That means they contain each other essentially. They pass through the same position here, and that is why they, we call them as collinear. So these. Three axes are going to be collinear, and this result we could obtain when we did simplification of symmetry operations generated by the C6 axis of symmetry. So we should do this exercise for axes of different order, and then see what kind of symmetry operations are generated by different uh, proper axes of symmetry. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. What we have discussed during this lecture is initially we tried to. Understand the difference between symmetry elements and symmetry operations. We have seen what kind of uh, symmetry elements produce uh, what sort of symmetry operations, and we discussed. Uh, we begin our discussion with uh, the uh, plane of symmetry, and we saw that the plane of symmetry produces one symmetry operation only, that is reflection operation. And similarly, the center of symmetry produces uh, one symmetry operation, that is inversion operation. While in case of the proper axis of symmetry, we have seen, depending upon the order of the axis, the number of distinct symmetry operations generated by different proper axis of symmetry are different, and one needs to uh, do this sort of simplification to find out what kind of symmetry operations are generated by different uh, proper axis of symmetry. So, with this, uh, let me conclude this lecture, and I thank you very much for being with me during this lecture.